were undercover, secretly filming in a hospital just outside Beijing. He says he's gay and wants to change. The psychiatrist describes a treatment she says can help him. Electric shock therapy. In a Beijing apartment, activists from China's largest gay rights group, the LGBT Center, are holding a secret meeting. This week, they're hosting their annual fundraiser, the gala. It's vital for the group's future. But their director, Ying Xin, known as Iron, is worried the authorities will ban the party as they've done in the past. Every year we just uh, do it very underground, um, keep it as a secret. She's lying low, avoiding calls from the police. She says they don't like any type of activism. Have they approached you specifically? Yes, of course. For, for NGO people, we have this kind of uh, joking. We said, if you, you never been visited by policemen, that means you are not... Uh, NGO. Yeah, achieve a very good job. <laughs> Besides the fundraiser, the group has another big target. They're campaigning to stop gay conversion therapy across China. So what is conversion therapy? It's a kind of uh, therapy which aims to change your sexual orientation. Uh, always they want to change you to heterosexual people and uh, um, uh, electric shock they use equipment so it can shock you uh, it's not a very big shock but uh, it will hurt hurt you being gay is not illegal in china and recently the lgbt center helped win a court ruling which set a legal precedent against promoting gay cures so it's raised the group's political profile. Speaking to the activists, it seems like the government doesn't have a problem with homosexuality itself, but it is wary of any groups organizing themselves politically and working with foreigners. With Iron lying low and focused on the gala, we meet up with 22-year-old John Shen, her deputy. Hi. John. Oh, yes. It's Shona. Yeah, I'm Shona. Hi, How nice are you? you? Lovely to meet you too. John is going to help our investigation by going into the clinics with secret cameras, pretending he wants to change his sexual orientation. If I ask him or her for a for electric shock, they might just ask me to maybe lay down on the, the sofa or on the chairs. Is this John's group have secretly recorded consultations inside gay conversion clinics, but never the actual treatment. If doctors offer John electric shock therapy, he plans to go through with it. What's your personal motivation for doing this? When I came out to my relatives, so my mom or my dad, when they asked me to, you know, like, you have to go to the hospital and see and check first, and I just answered it that I've already got. <laughs> and, and I kind of uh, expose all the the bad things there. If you want to take a look, I can show you the documentary. With the group's help, we start calling and identifying hospitals that tell us they offer gay conversion therapy. But before our first appointment, John says we need to meet urgently. It's our first taste of how hard it is to be an activist in China. John, tell me what exactly is going on. Uh, yesterday, um the police came to, came to our office and he asked my colleague, are you filming something recently? And is this something about uh, con conversion therapies? How do you think they found out about us in the first place? Maybe our phone is kind of you know, being tracked by the police. And we talk about this film and, and Channel 4 in that phone. The police want the activists to stop working with us, but they want to continue. Maybe the worst thing is that they, they put me into the prison for, for a month. I don't think that, that will happen, so, anyway. That 
night we drive to Tianjin, a port city just outside the capital. John's first appointment is the next morning at the Tianjin Xi'an Mental Health Hospital. The plan is to pull up five minutes away from the hospital because it's not safe to go directly there ourselves. John is going to walk there. Uh, he's going to be wearing his secret filming equipment and hopefully he'll be back within an hour. Do they feel okay? It's okay. Do I feel? Do I look good? Yeah, yeah. it looks good. Okay, so you um, have your bag and you have your glasses. Over the phone, they've told us they offer electric shock therapy and other treatments for homosexuality. John is taken to meet a senior psychiatrist. How does that? Just that I'm here to work. 嗯，我我我我觉得我自己可能喜欢喜欢男生，对我觉得我我我我不想这样。The psychiatrist says the problem is in his mind and starts to outline a range of remedies for his gay urges. 这个你可以常做吧，有这想法，脑子一冒出来的，洗个冷水澡，跑步跑跑的大汗淋漓，我就把我身体。John asks if there's anything else he can try. She tells him there's a drug he can take if he feels sexual urges towards another man. John asks her about electric shock therapy. After making some calls, she says the drug and electric shock treatments aren't available at her hospital. But suggests one where they might be. John fixes to come back and see her and find out more. I'm sad about about the truth that you know they don't they don't want to know more about the, about this community, and they just went on the conversion therapy. We contacted the hospital to ask for their response to the fact that one of their senior psychiatrists told John that treatments are available for homosexuality. They have not responded. Back in Beijing, John invites his activist friends around to a studio apartment. Are all of you guys out? I'm out to everyone except my parents. It's like parents. I think parents is the the, the most you know, the most hard part for the Chinese people. Kind of like I don't want to hurt my parents, because it's like they they gonna thought they gonna think that maybe because they have done something wrong, make to make me to be gay or something. In China, there there is a saying from Confucius, like the most one of the most uh, disrespectful things to your parents. Is that is not to have a offspring. In fact, John and his friends say it's mostly parents who take their gay sons and daughters into the conversion clinics. Being forced to to go to the uh, clinic uh, by their parents, their parents might say, that "If you are don't, uh, if you refuse to go there, uh, I will not support you to go to school anymore." While John's been with us. His friends have been working on the fundraising gala so essential for the group's future. They're still worried the police are going to stop it. If we are cancelled, uh, it, it means we will not, there, will not, there will not be any Beijing LGBT centre in Beijing, at least for this year.
What's surprising about these guys is that they're fearless when it comes to taking on the authorities, yet almost none of them are out to their parents. We identify another hospital that tells us it offers electric shock therapy. This time, another of our volunteers poses as a patient. He knows prolonged electric shock treatment can be dangerous, but also that a single session will leave no lasting damage. His appointment is with a senior psychiatrist at the Huashan Hospital in Tianjin. After an hour-long consultation, she tells him she has a machine that can treat his sexual orientation. He's led to a treatment room. The nurse starts by applying two volts. She then places the electrode on his head and increases the voltage. The doctor says the electric shocks will treat his homosexuality by rebalancing his nervous system. Our volunteer is charged 3,500 kwan, about 350 pounds, and asked to come back soon. We contacted the hospital and the psychiatrist our volunteer saw to ask their justification for administering electric shock as a treatment for homosexuality. They have not commented. There's no scientific evidence electric shock and other treatments can change sexual orientation. But I want to know if prolonged exposure to them is harmful. Johnny. Hi, it's Shauna. Nice to meet you. So I visit Johnny Lee, a psychotherapist who specializes in counseling gay people. Ju We've heard a lot about these quack therapies, but this is really the first time we've been told about the damage they can do to a person's mental health. John and some of the other activists are gathering at a downtown coffee shop. They're certain their office is being monitored. It's two days before the fundraiser. The group are assigning tasks to the volunteers. When we put the camera down, two women walk in and start openly photographing us. Then I notice a man taking pictures of the entire group. We've just been asked to leave very, very quickly. There's a guy in the corner who's taking the photo of all of the LGBT group and ourselves, so 
We're very nervous that it's the belief. We don't know where John is, but we're going to try and find him once we've regrouped. Quick, guys, quick. Up until now, we've just been hearing that they think their phones are being tapped. They think their emails are being monitored. They might, the government might be following them. But this is the first time I've, I've seen it for myself. I absolutely saw a man taking photos of all of us in the corner. I mean, it's definitely worrying for us, but it's so much worse for John and the guys. The gala could be canceled and worse, the center could be closed down. Can you hold spot him? We drive around trying to find John, but his phone's off. Finally, we get a message from him. He's nearby. John, are you okay? Uh, yes, kind of. I think it's all right. What just happened in there? Uh, like there are a guy with two girls, and they are filming something from the very, from the very beginning. Who do you think they are? Not sure, but there is one possibility that they might be uh, cops. At times like this, John, do you ever feel like this work maybe just isn't worth it? The, you know, the only thing I, I, I'm thinking about, I'm worried about for the whole night is about our gala. It's nothing about myself, actually. We drop John off at his apartment. For the next 24 hours, John is going to lay low. He says he's going to turn off his phone. He's not going to leave his apartment, and he's just going to pray that they don't cancel this event. We don't hear from John until the next evening, the eve of the fundraiser, when he comes to see us. How are you? Hi. Hi. I kind of turn off my phone for the whole day, so so like maybe people cannot find me. Yes, to in case there's someone call me and do something. And if the police did come tomorrow, how would that make you feel? If they come and close the event, of course first we can do nothing because if we do if you do anything, if you argue with them, we will totally be put into the prison. And so, I don't want to think about this right now, actually. John feels he's leading a double life. He hasn't even told his mum he's gay, let alone he might be in trouble with the police. I really want to share my own, the true experience, and I really want to tell her that, like, how, we, how I fight with my boyfriend, and like, or, or like, if one day, you know, that day could come that I could, take my boyfriend uh, back home. I just want to, you know, share my life with my whole family. It's the day of the fundraiser. A lot of people have promised to come, but the venue is being kept secret until the last moment. John's just sent me a text with the location of the party, so we're on our way there now. It's on the roof terrace at a big hotel in the business district. Shall we do this one, John? Yes, of course. Okay, let's do it. Pick the color, red. John and the others are certain that if the police are going to shut them down, they'll do it before the guests arrive. The two hour wait is excruciating. And then the guests arrive. There are more Chinese supporters than they've ever had before, and plenty of foreigners. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. This is Iron from Beijing LGBT Center. We have achieved so many things. The first time we win the cases of anti-gay conversion therapy, our wisdom and our courage will give us the magic of changing the enemy into our allies. Thank you. The event is a huge success. 
They've sold hundreds of tickets and raised enough money to keep the centre open for another year. How has this week been for you, Iron? The build-up, the stress, not knowing whether it was going to go ahead or not. How was that? You know, we always worry about maybe the police will come and shut down our event. So we designed many plan B, plan C to make sure that we can make this event happen. I think we should also grab this opportunity to communicate with policemen. I think why they, uh, uh, they, want, they try to regulate us, just because they still they don't understand what we are doing. What no one knew was that at that very moment, the police were at the LGBT centre looking for iron. It's been an incredible week of uncertainty, of nerves and of fear. But that's just turned into this huge success story. We don't know what the future holds for these guys, but we do know their centre gets to stay open for another year. Before we leave, John returns to the Tianjin Xi'an Mental Health Hospital for his follow-up appointment. He's expecting a referral to a doctor or hospital that does electric shock treatment. We wait for an hour. During my way back here, I said, maybe I won't cry anymore because kind of already finished all my tears there. <laughs> She's, when I cried there, she kind of told me that, that, you know, you are normal. I think you're very outstanding. John's just had a meeting with a different doctor, the director of the Department of Psychiatry. She told him that although she'd once <laughs> used electric shock therapy to treat homosexuality, she now thinks it's ineffective and cruel. She told me that they're like, now it's not a mental disorder anymore. And at least she, she thinks it's no big deals. It's, you can still lead a normal life. It's the first time John has seen with his own eyes how the attitudes of some doctors are changing. Still, there are a lot of un, like, unfriendly doctors I, I and like to so me that means there's still a lot of work to do and I think our work will never end but yes you know progress yes the next day the police came to the LGBT center looking for John to avoid them he left the city for a week he's now back in Beijing continuing his work for gay rights <laughs>